Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. And I'm butt-ass tired. Um, <laughs> Dead-ass, <laughs> fucking stank-ass tired. Um, I showered, so the stank-ass is gone. Fucking but, uh, filthy crotch ass <laughs> yes. just like the kind that leaves a rash that won't go away no matter what ointment you and use. everybody's like that's not what tired means that's <laughs> <laughs> this guy's confusing <laughs> being like unhygienic with being sleepy <laughs> at the risk of having child protective services kicked down my door i always used to joke about like that being the best part about having a kid would be that you could teach him the wrong words and then just sit back and watch the fallout from it. I, I like I'm preparing like the way I'm going to ki- keep my kid off drugs. I'm going to like explain drugs to him in like the worst way. Just get everything wrong. And then when he like tries <laughs> to go get drugs, they'll beat the shit out of him for being such a nerd. I mean, he'll walk away with a Big Mac thinking it's a drug. Yeah, or something. Like, like, oh, yeah. I've smoked pot tons of times and just eats a fucking quarter pounder with cheese. That's, right. That's, I'd be like, actually, I, you know what? I would actually be a little more worried if he had that kind of relationship with McDonald's. And so, like, <laughs> I'd rather he smoked pot all the time. Yeah. It's like, cause it's like, probably healthy. Cause that's the right. path I'm on. And I don't want my kid, you know, fucking going down diabetes Avenue. <laughs> I've been trying to eat better. And then the new, uh, the new fucking Red Bull. That the I don't know what it is. I don't. I'm not a big Red Bull person, but uh, I, I just use it as a mixer with alcohol generally. But um, every year their winter edition is awesome. Last year it was a plum one, and it was, was fantastic. Right. It was, that was really good. And then this year I was I wasn't even like I was just walking past them in the aisle, and I looked over and just happened to see it's like winter edition, and it looked different. So I looked closer, and it's like Arctic Berry, and I'm like I always love Arctic Berry, even though that's not an actual fucking flavor. Everybody, I was gonna like, say, how could you? I don't know what that is, <laughs> right? Because that's, that's like Arctic Berry for... Gatorade, Arctic Berry candy. Like that's the thing is, it's never a but, consistent flavor, but I always yeah. like anything that puts that on the on the label and it's like yeah that'll go with tequila and okay. let me tell you it goes with tequila it, well i mean anything does. can pretty much red, any red bull can knock out take the edge off tequila but well it basically turns it into a poor man's margarita because that's all a margarita is a sugar sour and tequila and yeah all red bull is a sugar there's not a lot of sour but there's it's yeah. there it'll work yeah actually so. this is the week that's probably why i'm pissy today but like I, this was the week I decided, like, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from caffeine because I was just like, oh, every right. day I drink energy drinks and usually more than one, um, at least one, like, one of those, like, Java monsters, which is, like, 300 fucking milligrams of caffeine. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to ease off it. And, like, I... I realized like it's not the caffeine boost at this point. It's like any addict. It's just like the ritual. Yeah. At this point. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why I never got into smoking. Like everybody in my family has smoked at one point. Uh, I think my brother's smoking again. Actually, I don't yeah. remember. No, <laughs> they've yeah. given it up and like, started again. But, um, but I know that's the kind of person I am. I wouldn't be necessarily as addicted to the nicotine. Although you do, you can't not get addicted to a physical yeah. thing like that but, but for me really, it'd be way more the ritual i I mean, I mean i've never gotten past that thing i don't smoke but i think it's badass i think i so, know that's, I, the like, problem. I, that's my like, problem like i think theatrically it's really fucking cool they, everything's better if somebody's smoking in a scene <laughs> especially for something about it like the old westerns with the hand rolled cigar- uh, cigarettes yeah. like every time i see that it's like fuck i need some papers and tobacco right now like i don't smoke but i want it and all those people <laughs> like everybody's like oh you'll get cancer or some shit but it's like if you if you're actually smoking right you'll die in a gunfight before that can happen <laughs> so <laughs> right yeah so I, I'm very suggestible with that yeah. stuff. Like I, I will have a cigar every now and then, although it's probably been two or three years. Just a celebratory um, cigar. Yeah. I like mean, it's just, I like them. If I, they're, they're just, there's a tobacco shop. I mean, they're all over there, but there's one specific cigar shop up in a, 
shopping center. It's called Easton, but it's up North Columbus, about 45 minutes away from us. But sometimes if we go out there, there's like restaurants, uh, certain restaurants we like out there. Yeah. And so I would stop in and buy like one or two. And then that would last me like two months. You have to end- eventually smoke them because they go stale. But, um, but then every time I see somebody, we'll be like watching a movie and it's always some badass old dude that lights up a cigar and you're like, damn it. Yeah. Like, you picture, like, if I only had a cigar, I'd be a bad at And it's not true. I'm still just a short, fat, like, idiot, just time with a cigar. But, uh, but yeah, that mental image works. I can see why parents <laughs> are so mind, upset about, like... so fucking cool, and everybody else, he, like, he kind of looks like the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, the Danny DeVito's penguin is one of the fictional characters I, like, identify with the most. Even though I hated that character, because he was just so disgusting. Yeah, that but, uh, that was always like <laughs> nowhere in the, like Tim Burton's a fucking idiot because like nowhere in the story of Batman has he ever been portrayed as like a literal monster like that. Yeah, like <laughs> eating raw fish. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you took the like sharp teeth and the eating like fish guts away, Danny DeVito's penguin is, is that's me. But. uh I'd like to think I'm not quite that evil either, but maybe I am. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess we don't get this to judge is, how this evil. Is, this is an ongoing are. show. Well, yeah. it'll be like Breaking Bad, you know. <laughs> you started out okay. Started out with good intentions, yeah. Well, and then by the end, you're eating raw fish for the show, which I, I'm all for. Just if we're the making sounds. the kind of money he was making in Breaking Bad, yeah. Well, we that's how we'd get popular. It'd be that. What is that? The AS. Or I don't know what it stands for. The that whole thing that's about like just different weird sounds. Oh, a- a- ASMI or ASCMI yes. or some shit. I, yeah, whatever that is. Um, I never got it because I'm the kind of person that those sounds like if I ever murder somebody, it's going to be either for littering or like eating like noisily because those two things just <laughs> it's it's a thing that like. You, you you always read about or see in movies characters like going into the blind rage and those are the two things that like get me closest to just like blacking out and being violent. Yeah, yeah I almost uh, I think the first time I me and my brother fought a lot growing up, um, but the first time I ever like started it was when he was smacking his lips eating cereal. And it was really pissing me off. <laughs> it's just, yeah, there's something about that noise that just, and then people like seek that stuff out on purpose. They're like, oh, because it's like the nails on a chalkboard thing. I'm like, that's bad. Like it's that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all, it was also I unnecessary. I he was being a dick. I I, I said yeah, stop doing yeah. that, and you know, you well, you know, you've met Adam. He's like, <laughs> he's like, well, I'm gonna do it more. Yeah. I was ready for one of you two to murder the other one over a Rocket League match, so I get it. Yeah, and I, I've got we've actually, I, I think we turned a corner. We've been playing Rocket League and actually been doing pretty well. But <laughs> well, the, the key is I'm not there. That's I was the problem. Yeah. Even though I, yeah, I felt rel- rather neutral in the situation. I, I, I guess I contributed. No, I, 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 it was mostly we just. <laughs> he's that type of fucking prick where you're like you're playing a game with him and you'll be like yelling at the game like why'd that happen and he'll just be on the other end look normal to me <laughs> i'm like i yeah, fucking my, hate it i fight if there's the master of that because we it was it used to be real extra bad because my computer was up in the living room at the old house so i'd be playing a game something like cuphead where you're getting really really mad at the game and I've talked about it before. It's the kind of game that for, to an outside observer, observer, they're like, if he hates it so much, why is he playing? Why, it's yeah. like you actually love the game, but it's it's well, frustrating. Well, people, and I had a little bit of this last night putting this fucking chair together and actually building. I, I got a new chair for people who don't follow me on Twitter. Shame on you <laughs> to not hear this great news. But I got a new chair and I was like kind of rearranging my room to make room for everything. And I was getting pissed off at shit. And I was just kind of that thing of like, people don't understand you part of the process of defeating something, especially like being... Cuphead is getting pissed about it a little. Right. And right. that but adrenaline anyway, so drives I'll, I'll, you. 
Right, but I'll be playing a game and I'll be like, you know, I'll die and I'll be like, fucking damn it. And the terror will be like, did you lose? And man, that's the worst fucking not. thing to say I, when you're I pissed killed at a it. game. I killed it, babe. Yeah. I'm a king. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know, I can't it. help but be so sarcastic. It's like, no, I did good. That's why I'm screaming no, at the game. No, I'm, <laughs> fucking, I'm fucking happy. You know, but I guess that's a pretty universal thing because that's, I think, where that meme started about the, the dad coming in. No, Tara, uh, it's great. I I didn't win, but I learned something about myself. It's great. Um, and then you beat it, and you're like, "Man, that was a great game." And she's like, "What the hell?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I made it. You? I was like, "Game of the year," and I'm like, I'm the one. I'm the one person sitting here like, "Don't put out that DLC." I don't want to fucking. <laughs> I don't want to play Cuphead anymore. It fucking killed me. Well, it's very good that we didn't have a child when I was playing Cuphead because every other word out of my mouth was F. Oh, like, she know. needs to learn the ways of the world, okay? Eh, well, and the I ways of the world is... I try not to, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but Especially watching sports, yeah. but uh, whatever. Yeah, it's like you're either going to learn it from the Browns game or you're going to learn it from a good game. So. <laughs> anyway. yeah, it's either what the fuck or fuck yeah. I mean, you're going to hear it one way or the other. Right. Um... <laughs> Anyway, this is the non-essential podcast. That's our usual ten-minute rambly ass intro. intro. Yeah. But on this show, we tell each other stories. They could be about anything. And Steve has oh, one today. Me, I'm, yeah, and I'm 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 really showcasing that it's about anything. Because <laughs> we've been really deeply entrenched in like kind of the horror murderer. Mm-hmm whatever thing for for a while now. A lot of our sh- yeah. uh, recent shows have been on that. Where we this thrive. is not that. Yeah. So the year is 1907. You, a French waiter at your town's classiest restaurant, sigh as another couple is shown to their seats. You as you stroll up to their table. Yeah, le sigh. Le sigh. (laughs) I think they fought a World War II battle there, the Battle of Le Sigh. The Battle of Le Sigh. (laughs) That would be a great book name. As you stroll up to the table and ask how Madame and Monsieur are doing this evening, the man barely acknowledges you as he reads over the menu and strokes his luxurious French mustache. In fact, every man in the restaurant seems to be stroking or twirling or twitching his finely groomed facial fur. In contrast, your cold, bare lip leaves you feeling emasculated, alienated, After your shift, you'll go home and weep as your wife does her best to console you, even though your naked face repulses her to her very core. I feel like this is an ad read. What the fuck is going on? (laughs) I wore my pinstripe suit and was drinking a a bourbon while I wrote it. Um, Because everything, you know me, you can't say ad without me immediately going to Mad Men, even Mm -hmm. though I never, ever once watched the show. Don Draper is still... That's probably why I'm like, oh, Don Draper's so cool, because I know he's not. I know he's terrible. I mean, people (laughs) watched every episode of that, and that's what they took away from it, even though the message is like, yeah, these people are kind of sociopaths. That's right. But that's who I picture now, and it's like, yeah, cool. Um, I think most of us are kind of familiar with the cliche image of a Frenchman who, along with his beret and scarf, always has some style of mustache... Uh, and while cliches are just that, there's also always a reason why they become cliche in the first place. So, by the mid-1700s, the French fashion had become so obsessed with men's facial hair that society began adopting strict rules surrounding it. Uh, mustaches were actually a sign of military prowess, so much so that soldiers of like any like recognizable rank whatsoever were required to to have a mustache. Those who couldn't grow the facial hair naturally were ordered to stick on faux stashes or mouth merkins. I think I like mouth merkins better. Um, But (laughs) I love that idea. They're like, look, this is the army. We want to look respectable. Stick this wig on your lip. (laughs) But that's, that's literally where they were. So, of course, very soon, mustaches as a status symbol started making their way into civilian life as well. Um, one theory is that the economic boom from the Industrial Revolution and uh, I would French name my mustache Stolen mustache. Valor. Stolen Valor. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a theory that, that thanks to the Industrial Revolution, um, you know, it... 
it's well known that like economically that changed a lot of things. People that didn't used to have access to certain luxury items suddenly did because they were much cheaper uh, to be made. Um, so I think it was like in part of that and part of the uh, boom from French colonization, which we have talked before about the, <laughs> I would say the colonization era. So in some ways it feels like we're still there. Um, but <laughs> how bad that that was, but this is 1700. So that was kind of still in the thick of that. Like, Hey, you're different than us. So this country is ours now. Um, thing. But, uh, anyway, more regular schlubs were getting access to the kinds of goods and services once only obtainable by the wealthy. So therefore French society began to look at other ways to make sure that everybody knew who was worthwhile and who was the pitiful riffraff. Of course, the problem with that is, um, I think I skipped a thought there, but so the French, the, the mustaches became the thing. If you, if you had a mustache, that meant you had some kind of status. Um, of course, the problem with that is while goods and services may become cheaper, growing facial hair is free. So in order to use that as your arbitrary social bar of self-worth, you have to ensure that none of the undesirables can have it. And to that end, servants, priests, and waiters were among those menial laborers who were literally forbidden to grow facial hair. So... Basically, cookie dusters became the sneech stars of the French, like, masculinity or the French status. Ergo, not having a mustache was a symbol of, like, shame. I don't know how they did it, because, like, if my facial hair gets too long. Like, I it literally just grows out of laziness. Like, uh, <laughs> I, like I think I need some facial hair to look okay, but... Like, it's specifically the mustache where I'm like, get this shit the fuck off my yeah, face. Yeah. I feel like I, such uh, a dirtbag. Ex- I'm the exact same. And of course, that means the only facial hair that I can really grow well is a mustache. Like, everywhere else on my face, it's like, haha, fuck you. I'm going to make you look like a 13 year old white trash, like, <laughs> person. Because it's so patchy and light yeah. and fuzzy. Eh. Yeah, but right. I did that the other, other like a week or two, oh, it was probably two weeks ago now or three. I was like, fine. I, I haven't clean shaved. You know, I'll trim. I've got an electric like trimmer, but I was like, fuck it. I'm going to shave like, you know, you're supposed to do. Big, big mistake, except for at least right now you're supposed to wear masks when you're out. So it doesn't really matter. You can't yeah. tell. No, I'm going to keep wearing masks even when all this is over. I'm going to just. I might too. You know, there's, I'm starting to like it. Like. Yeah. No, I, I I like that feeling of like you don't actually know how I'm responding to you. <laughs> right, that's what I was going to say. I'm a, I I like to be able to sneer at people without them. I mean, you can still kind of tell in the eyes, but it does yeah. cover up a lot of my contempt for my fellow human. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I, yeah. to be fair, I'll still get in trouble at work because like I'm very expressive, like you said, with the eyes. So if you say something ridiculous to me. I won't. <laughs> you, you could put a billboard over my face. You'll know it still. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, people that were deemed, you know, unworthy weren't allowed to have facial hair. What's more, that meant veterans who had served in the military and earned their mustaches, um, while the importance in the status of their lip ticklers were drilled into them as part of the mal- proud military tradition would, you know, often find themselves out of service, uh, being forced to shave those mustaches off because all they could find were these quote unquote menial jobs, you know, as like waiters and such yeah. and servants. And for them, that had to be like extra bad because you spent half your career being told this mustache makes you proud and then being told you're worthless, shave it off. Like, it's funny because it's easy to look back at this now from where we're at and it's completely ridiculous, but it's not because it's society literally marking you. It's, it's it's like branding you so that no matter where you go, people know that they're supposed to think less of you. And it yeah. had to be a very shitty feeling for the people that were not allowed to have facial hair. Um, that's what I say. The first thing I thought, I don't know if you, that, that Sneetch book from Dr. Seuss was just a, a seminal book, you know, as a young kid where, 
the ones with stars were the good ones until they made a printing press that like figured out how to add them to all of them or something. Yeah. I forget the exact yeah. how it goes, but that's exactly what this is. It's it's that exact. Thing. We can we can put two pays on our lips too. <laughs> So, for uh, especially the people in the military, but for all of them, it was very degrading. But, of course, that's what the – I put the – because I'm so smart, but then when I thought I'm going to say it, it will sound dumb. But the bourgeoisie wanted the the, the hairy, mustached-lipped that was actually upper the, class. That was what he was going to go with before he went with Sneetches. Sneetches, yeah, the bourgeoisie. So all cultures have their fashions, and as an American, I'm not about to make fun of the French like facial hair exception, or, or any co- country stuff, because we've got a lot of really stupid fucking things that we do here too. But you know, mustache, you know, as as a fashion trend, whatever. But as a status symbol, it's it is it's really stupid. Mm-hmm. And that's not just me looking at it from a modern angle. Even those outside of French culture also found the practice childish or. I guess man childish. Um, the Atlas Obscura article, which I'll cite in my notes this week, uh, includes a quote from the New York Times from May of 1907, uh, yeah, in which the author writes, Every uh, puny whipster proclaims himself a samurai by the her sweet adornments. They're basically pointing out that, like, all these, like, skinny ass, nerdy loser people, like, just because they had a mustache, they'd walk around like they were some, like, hero or something. That's literally where they were with it in France at the time. But like I said, no matter how stupid it is to act like that because you have a mustache, it genuinely had to be shit to be branded so that everybody, like I said, it's basically walking around saying, hey, this person's worthless. Uh, so I don't want to downplay that aspect of it. Um... By 1907, you know, waiters and servants and stuff, they'd had enough of that. And so the waiters across the country went on strike, which is why the topic is actually called the Great French Mustache Strike. Uh, though the strike wasn't only about facial hair, workers were also seeking, you know, better working conditions. Like hours were ridiculous and they wanted more re- realistic hours. But we're and- willing to overlook all that if we can just grow out some bullshit. <laughs> so, so- they wanted a wage increase. They didn't get paid enough. But yeah, really, the the right to grow facial hair was among their chiefest demands. So thousands of waiters going on strike was terrible for business. But like most strikes, there were still a number number of workers who continued to work, um, which in their, in their defense, it's easy to say like, oh, this is shit. You're being treated like shit. You should strike. But when you have a family to feed and you I know that... Yeah. So, you can't blame them. For I mean, that's the constant working. struggle now is like people like don't cross the picket line, but it's like, you know, that's easier said than done. Uh, in, right. In it's any like this situation shit going on with Uber. And I can't believe that that thing passed in California. I mean, I can't believe it, but yeah, um, not just Uber, but all these like gig things. And it's like, well, oh, well you should just not work for him. It's like, that's easy for you to say your family won't starve to death. If you quit driving for Uber, like, right. <laughs> So you can't blame the people that keep working for for terrible companies. You know, I I'm not gonna like scream at my Amazon delivery driver because Bezos is a piece of crap. But yeah. uh, but anyway, there between the ones that didn't go on strike, and then of course there's the scabs that would come in to to take up the jobs that were now open from the strikers. Um, but people that do go on strike tend to not look favorably upon <laughs> upon those people because it. Kind of lessens the impact of your strike if somebody else just takes up the work, because then it's like, oh hey, proven yeah, I, there's the company's yeah. position that you're expendable enough to not give them right. those things you want. Yeah. Plus now your job's gone. It's like you go on strike with the hopes that they'll be forced to give you what you want and hire you back. And now it's like now we don't have to give in and we don't need you. And it's like well shit. Right. So understandably, the strikers weren't real happy with the uh, the scabs and the and the workers. So there was a lot of like loud demonstrations outside of um, restaurants, as you would expect. Um, of course, that brought in police and the anti like demonstration goons, like companies always hire to break up the protesters, and they did so with extreme prejudice. So much so that, as one Los Angeles Times article wrote, at one point a group of American tourists stopped for lunch at a Parisian restaurant. 
The Americans were clean shaven because they didn't give a shit about mustaches. Mm-hmm. And as such, were mistaken for striking, wor- striking workers and were loudly and forcefully thrown out, much to their confusion. They had no idea what, the, you know, they just wanted some fucking lunch and some guys came up and were like, get the fuck out of here, you. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Okay. Um, of course, public figures and newspaper columnists at the time limited the strike. One such person dismissed the issue, saying that if waiters are allowed to grow facial hair, then the wealthy will just start shaving and they'll complain about that. So in short, he argued that no matter what they did, the aristocracy would find a way to differentiate and alienate them. So why even bother addressing it in the first place? Well, Which it's is a sh- it, shit it, argument, but it's yeah. not wrong. But well, no, he is wrong in that, like you know what? If you make it, as long as you don't make it something that they're restricted from doing, then like, why you know, why do rich and military people need a fucking facial hair status symbol <laughs> exclusive <laughs> to them? Like yeah, that's yeah. a garbage point. Because it's like the, their whole argument is like cutting us off from this dumb well, fucking facial hair the, thing. Is the bullshit. funny thing to me is it's not pointing out that it's shit to treat other people like crap. It's like, it's like well, but they'll just find a different but way. Yeah, so why we'll, bother? Yeah, it's, we're gonna we're gonna f- believe me. We will find a way to treat poor people like crap. Um. So, <laughs> so, so you better uh, take the devil, you know, because we can get creative here. <laughs> So another journalist openly complained that if waiters were allowed to grow mustaches, well, then they'd be able to go out at night after work without people knowing their profession. And it's like, hey, well, I okay. Don't, <laughs> I might have to make a judgment call on a person based off who they are and not what they do yeah. for a living. I might Fuck. accidentally ho- hobnob with somebody that's a waiter. That would be fucking off. Like of someone of my <laughs> class. And then he went I on to say that, of course. seduced by a Waiter. waiter. And then it, this part's funny because it applies a thousand percent to our culture right now. And this is talking not about the mustache part, but about wanting, you know, a livable wage. He said, well, then the cost of beers will go up in order to offset the waiter's increased pay. And then the waiters will be laughing at us under their mustaches as customers are, who are dumb enough to pay increased prices continue to buy beers. Now let's say, uh, I said, it's the same yeah. argument people are making with the 15. Oh, well, if you raise that, then the price of everything will go up, which is not how it's ever really worked. It might a little bit, but that people, people act like if you that. raise minimum wage, but the idea 50%. of the right idea of raising minimum wage, and that's kind of why I'm like a little lukewarm about the, you know, those sorts of movements. And uh, like, I, I'm glad they're getting passed, but it's. You know, that chicken or the egg thing is like, well, then now we have to, you know, increase our prices because there is a little bit of that. But it's well, mostly. Yeah. And the other thing that will happen and we could do a whole political show because we both have very strong opinions here. My problem with just saying make a $15 minimum wage is that just saying that doesn't work. A, prices go up a little bit. They're not going to like double if yeah. it's doubling here. That's not how that works. But what does happen is if you're McDonald's and you're paying people $8 an hour, now you have to pay them 15 an hour. You say, okay, we're just hire- or we're firing half of our staff. Right. So the payroll stays the same. And for the half that get to keep their job, great. You're making $15 an hour. For the half that lost your job, well, now you're making zero. Yeah. And so you're doing sucks. twice the fucking work you were doing before. And, and the root of that problem is companies refuse to eat. And there's, and in a lot of cases, there's plenty of money in the profit margins to have this increase without doing that. But companies will not lower their profit. They'll find a way to squeeze it out somewhere else. Yeah. So, so that's my that's my biggest problem with simply saying make it fifteen dollars an hour. Is that's too. It gives too, too much general, wiggle yeah. room to right, right. It, like, it's not. It's not attacking the real problem. It's attacking yeah. the number and not what's causing the. the well, issue. well, yeah. It's like it's not addressing the economic issue of the. Like you should still do it because it absolutely in our well, economy it, it absolutely should be at least fifteen dollars. Um, but that's the funny thing is so many people, especially around here, get livid when you say fifteen dollars. Like, why should you get that for flipping burgers? It's like, hey, fuck you. That's a hard job. I don't see you doing it. And but you sure enjoy the service because yeah. you're going there four times a day. 
so I hate that. I hate that. But the other thing is, they're like fifteen dollars an hour. It's like you try living off fifteen dollars an hour. It's the I'm problem sorry. is a lot of these people that are hearing that are older, and to them that's like a million dollars. It's like that's. I'm sorry, that's but still I'm barely. never gonna not think that people who flip burgers and people, you know, fuck who do what I do, like. If you do, if you have a shitty fucking soul sucking retail or food service job, there's no reason a YouTuber should be making more money than you, <laughs> like ever. And and people will be like, well, it's entertainment and shit like that. But it's like that's just our economy prioritizing the wrong things because it's right. like those are the people who we use every single day. Is like. The people who make that fucking shitty well, food for us that's delicious. That's what I hate is when people are like, it's a, it's a mean, they should just get a better job. It's like, get a better are job. Are you going to go cook your own food and serve it to you? Yeah. I don't think so. Like, uh, I, I, yeah, you, those people can go straight to hell. I, they, I have no, like, if you're, you know, if you're not respecting service people, fuck you. Because yeah. in my, service people make my life easier. And I appreciate that because my life is tough <laughs> as is. Right. Like, and it's, you know, and it, that sounds like I'm just bashing on YouTube people like, hey, good for you. You found a grift like that's it. That is the American dream in action. Nobody can fault you for playing the game the way it was designed to be played since this country started. But don't stand in the way of like actually, you know, these types of things are like trying to do the right things for people. Don't be a voice box or a soapbox for fucking people who would undermine these ideas that like people deserve a livable a livable wage and to be treated you know fucking decently by their companies um well and in my opinion a lot of it is people that went to school got jobs that paid okay but they were soul sucking and they hated and they resent the fact that somebody else might be able to make a living without going down that same path as the, them. there's a lot and of that like, pettiness too like when you bring up like a 15 dollar minimum wage like you know, like people I've talked to, friends and family, they're like, well, my pay better go up. And it's like, if your pay goes up, then that actually does become the new minimum wage. And right. like, you can't, you like, I do think your time should be rewarded, but it won't be like, well, they got five more dollars an hour. I should get five more dollars an hour. Um, well, and then it, the argument you always hear is like, well, what's motivating me to like, do this job if I can make the same amount of money here. It's like, because you don't want to flip burgers? Like, yeah, let's be I mean, real. If, if you're okay doing that, then quit and go work yeah. at McDonald's. But you, then you'll say, fuck no, you'll never see me working there. And it's because you're a judgmental ass. Like I said, I yeah. I will never, ever insult somebody for working at a, really any job. Yeah. Um, except maybe a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you said. Uh, yeah, like really that is that is part of the payment, I think, for them. Is like, yeah, you get to do this awesome thing that you know it started as for most of them it started as a passion project and a hobby um and the you know the one backlash you get from that is everybody insults you because you don't have a real job <laughs> and that's <laughs> and for, in fairness and uh, like i said godspeed you you found your loophole and i'm still trying to but you know. I think, it, yeah, and that's the other thing too. And in fairness to them, I think it's easy to underestimate how much work that that can be. But yeah, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it, it is work, but it, it is a very different type of work. Sure. That sure. like but nobody you can say that about uh, acting and stuff too. My my but, job uh, doesn't send me a big grocery store metal plaque. You know, when I hit a certain point with it, you know, it's it, it, like I don't get trophies for. You know, anything you can do sitting on your ass is like, it's not the same. It's not to say you don't do hard work, but like, if you're just you on a webcam, you're, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going mean, to isolate a that, lot of our friends on yeah, Twitter because yeah. this is like, that's what they do. That's what they do. So but it's anyway. like a lot of them have worked real jobs. So I'm saying I'm not saying as a blanket if you YouTube you suck. I'm saying if all you've done is YouTube, uh, I'm jealous. Well, but also you yeah. suck. And part of that is some of the biggest YouTubers that make the most money. They were able to do that because they already were rich or coming from rich yeah. families, so they could afford to sit around and do nothing but make. Yeah, it's a it is a job 
some people rise up the it's like anything else you some people rise up the ladder but mostly it's privileged people yeah yeah um Anyway, so what anyway, happened in France? The whole point is that, that this guy, his his arguments are that, oh, well, you know, the beer, cost of beers will go up. And then he finished his super thoughtful piece by whining that all of this would likely lead to the upper class patrons themselves going on strike. Like, if you give in to the waiters, well, then the rich people will just strike, too. So, yeah, like, fuck that guy. He, he's an idiot. Um, I like him. And then still fun. others tried to make the argument that the mustache ban would, was a matter of hygiene. You know, if bacteria only has to travel from the mustache to our food rather than from the nose, then it will have a shorter route of, uh, to travel to reach our precious rich organs. Uh, which basically was their complaint. Hmm. Which honestly is That's better fair. science than most of the stories we've covered on yeah. this show. <laughs> but like, it's still pretty shit science. Like, Mustaches aren't really any, if anything, they would capture more of the germs instead of letting them just like run down in their face. I don't know. Uh, Rick, if you're a waiter, just please don't rub your, your snot and then touch my food. Like, it doesn't matter if it's mustache snot or bare skin snot. Like, yeah. yeah. But, um, there were, of course, supporters of the strike as well. Um, Largely among the French Republican Party, which, unlike the American Republican Party today, was the party that often stood for individual rights. Um, so they they were more like the the leftists. Um, the ah, I mean, that is that's that is a vague enough thing that like any political party would be like, we stand for individual rights. Yeah. And it's like, well, and, no, I mean, and that, that, I, they just yeah, reframe that, was, that. That was more my wording they they would be equivalent of the um the bernie sanders you know at the uh, at the time now like we say the, the politicians how many of them are actually caring about the people and the fact you know parties change at one point that was true in america too where the republican party was more like our modern day democrats and vice versa whatever um, I don't care about that argument because I don't care for either party. But um, there was a socialist deputy by the name of Antide Boyer who proposed a bill that would make mustache bans illegal. Yeah. Uh, the bill itself didn't pass, but it, they didn't need it. Uh, the waiters and, and servants and so forth were able to relatively quickly win the right to facial hair anyway, even without having to officially make the bans illegal of course in order to do so they ended up making concessions on their other demands like better pay and better hours oh. so you hit well, the nail do, on we, know, do we know anything about hollow victories because <laughs> that's what it was funny because it was reading about and that's really kind of the end of my notes they they won their mustaches and that was the great french mustache strike but it actually pissed off a lot of you know what we'd call liberals today um, because they gave in to get their facial hair and were like, yeah, that's okay. Keep paying us shit and treating us like crap as long as we get our mustaches. And the liberals were like, fuck, like, <laughs> uh, you idiots. <laughs> but that's human nature. And, and again, I, I, you know, I don't want to harp on them too, too badly because it feels like shit when society is doing, when they're basically bra physically, visibly branding you so that you can be ostracized everywhere yeah. you go. Your family is shamed. Your wife's shamed. Your kids are – I get that. Like to them, it didn't probably feel like a hollow victory. But that's why these things are such bullshit is because then they can be used to be like, look, we do care about you as long yeah. as you let us still like – It's still though – it's still like overcoming a symbol of uh, disparity and inequality instead of overcoming that inequality itself. Like they didn't look at them as – full-fledged workers and human beings they were just like fine fine like the rules are already in place for you to make dog shit so go ahead do whatever you want with your face we don't care at this point i think the bigger win is once they get rid of the 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 whole societal thing of fresh shaven means that you're you know a peon and 
anybody can have a mustache is that's a very short couple years to the fact that everybody can finally admit that mustaches are a pain in the fucking ass. Right. And then you can shave them without being ostracized for it. That's, that's the victory. That's the tragedy to this story is they all grew their mustaches and were like, this sucks. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, it's like, I mean, I'm glad we can do it now, but I fucking big, hate this. mustaches do it. Like I, mine doesn't, mine can, like it can get, that's the only part of my facial, well, my chin too. Like I can grow a goatee, but I look like a, I look like a sleazy, like porn star, like, but not even like a classy porn, like the, like, I don't know, like trailer park. <laughs> hey babe, I'll pay you eighty bucks if you'll be in my flick that you'll be in my I'll trailer the internet. Movie, trailer yeah. porn movie. Or movie. Just fucking Hey, and again I don't want to kick kink shame trailer porn if that's what you're in, but but that's what I look like with facial hair. Like mine is not dignified facial hair. It's West Virginia facial hair because that's where my family's from. Um is that a thing? Let's with just see West how many Virginia? different groups of people we can. We if can I look up West Virginia show. now, will I find nobody with a beard? I, I'm going to look, well, no, you find people with that, um, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm literally searching West Virginia facial hair to see what pulls up, but I, I don't even know how to describe it, but, uh, but like, yeah, your, your moonshiner, like hillbilly facial hair. That's what I grow. I don't, I, I can't grow a nice, like uniform beard, but, uh, the mustache I could grow out, I could have a killer porn stash, but. I hate them. I think, it's, I think every guy, if you've ever like let your facial hair go for a while, has done the thing that when you do finally shave, you leave the mustache part for a second just to like nope. see what it looks like. It's the first thing I go after, honestly. That's like, the way to do it, because even if you do it for a second as a joke, then you think less of yourself forever. Yeah, I'm like, um, get this fucking crap off my skin. You know the weird thing? If I when I googled West Virginia facial hair, the bulk of what pulls up are guys wanted for missing persons. Like this guy raped this woman or murdered this woman. Like that's what comes up when you search for West Virginia facial hair. It's all fugitives. Good. <laughs> that is probably, you know, it did take a turn at some point where it was like. You know, our most, you know, upstanding, respectable citizens will wear facial hair and then, like, it flipped well, yeah. at some point I mean, where it's like, because who's that like, suit portrait. better? As I say, look at any portrait of, like, a, even a Civil, a, a civil War, quote-unquote, hero, but, like, these general, the military people that everybody was, like, lauded at the time, they all had these giant, ridiculous fucking mustaches, every last one of them. <laughs> And imagine how much extra, like, terrible a mustache would be if you're living in battle conditions, like, where you can't really wash it or trim it or comb it. That's what would drive me crazy is when you get to that point where it's like, like, it, you you don't feel it until it's hanging, like, right around your lip, you know? Yep. Yep, I'm 100% okay until it, like, starts, like, yeah. getting in the way of... Like, if you're eating and the food touches it, it's like, nope, this has got to go. Yeah. Although, now that we've done this episode, I'll I'll just, like, let my mustache go as long as I can. We'll see. I'll, I'll still, like, it'll still grow out. I'll, I'll feel like a piece of shit, but shaving takes work. And it, Yeah, well, that's the a, that's a real reason why yeah. I quit doing, like, the shave-shave, like, clean-shaving thing. Yeah. Um, And then, like, once... I like how I look with stubble and yeah, I can't grow a full beard, but I can keep it as a, a decent. Yeah. stubble. I have, I have a decent stubble. It's just going to be a, I'm just going to be a fuzzy shithead my whole life. I've decided. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's where I'm at. And, and it's, that's way easier to maintain because I can, I can go with a short stubble or a longer stubble. So you, I take my trimmer about once every week or two and trim it down as short as it'll go but still have a stubble yeah. then i let it get long until it starts looking really trashy and then i do it again and that's yeah. so much easier yeah. i mean so that's sort of the turn i've taken this year getting back into skateboarding and everything like skateboarding uh as far as like fashion goes you get to look as much like a piece of shit as you want and nobody really <laughs> nobody really says anything about it yeah. so <laughs> 
Like, it's it, it's perfect has, for me. This has nothing to do with anything, but you just reminded me. I saw it on my drive home and I thought I got to bring it up on the show. So I'm glad it reminded me of it. But driving home, I passed this kid. He was walking down the side of the street. I say kid. He was a teen, like probably 17, 18 around there. I'm terrible judging age. But, uh, I mean, he looked like your typical, like, kind of skater dude. He almost looked like Dante from Devil May Cry, but didn't they have a, like, a white haired, like, a, the white haired version of Dante? Or am I thinking of Virgil? They, so, <laughs> time to nerd out on you. Because <laughs> it, it can never just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, in the original series, Dante and Virgil and Nero, the three kind of main characters of the, story they all have white hair it's part yeah, of being it's part of being a half demon is yeah silver and hair then people like in actually DM, like re- in dmc in he had black hair because yeah, ninja yeah. theory got told by capcom to make it as weird as fucking possible and then when you like powered up in that game you would like temporarily have white hair you're saying um, here yeah Saiyan. yeah it was basically saying shit um they just ripped off dragon ball uh, <laughs> so anyway, so, this kid was walking down the street, like kind of skater looking. And he had like the white, he looked like the white haired version of Dante. I thought I was right there, but I'm not a huge Devil May Cry guy. Except he had this big billowing royal purple cape. Awesome. Uh, like, yeah. And How like expanded. nothing else that he was wearing looked like cosplay or anything, but he had a purple cape and it looked like a velvet purple cape. And it was just windy. It was that perfect amount of wind if you're wearing a cape and That's walking. A bellowing in the wind. Yeah, but like like you want it to. It looked like uh-huh. they, you would set it up for a movie. But it was just like one of those things where you're like, huh. Like, I won't make fun it. of it because he's cooler yeah. than I am. But like, it's weird. Like, there's a weird combination, right? Like, mm-hmm. skater and cape. I'd, I'd never seen that before. Um, in uh, fact, to be fair, I've into- only... Like if you get into skating as much as I have this year, you watch some videos, you'll see some shit and people wearing some shit <laughs> as they do some shit. shit. So maybe that's it. Maybe that that was the thing. But uh, he's probably only the second or third person in my entire life that I've run into in the wild wearing a cape. Like not a you know not counting like conventions and stuff where it's obvious mm. cosplay. Um, but somebody genuinely a, saying this is cape weather. Yeah, went to mm. a. Uh, and I'll, it was the Ohio State Michigan State Big Ten Championship game the year I got married. My best man, who was awesome, he bought us ticket because we we just our wedding was in uh, it was New Year's Eve, so it's right around the time that all these like conference championship games are going on. And so instead of doing because we were in our mid thirties. Uh, and so instead of doing some like wild bachelor party that at this point we've been there, done that, neither of us <laughs> were really in that mood, he was able to get us tickets to the championship game, which is fucking awesome, except we lost. So that sucked. But like walking to the stadium, it's there in Indianapolis. We passed some dude wearing a cape, but like a old, like a old English cape, you know, like the um, wool, I assume, like an overcoat, like cloak almost. So it wasn't like, and he he wasn't going to the game. He was just walking down the streets of Indianapolis wearing a cloak. And we almost didn't go to the game. We 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 both looked at each other and we thought, let's follow this guy where whatever it happens, it's <laughs> got to be interesting. Like, as, as if our, there's some guy in a as cape, our it's first gotta... act as a couple, let's stalk this guy. <laughs> no, it was me and my best man. It wasn't me and oh, my wife. No. It was me and him. So, I mean, I guess we would be a couple, but a couple, really. hey, well, you'd... yeah. If you followed him, you would have had to get married. That's what he would have. You would have turned an alley. <laughs> well, it, and he would be yeah. like, I pronounce you two. Husband and husband. It's like, fuck, I was about to get married. I, but I, I pronounce guess you, you two a best boys. boys. But so that was cool. And again, I'm not trying to shame the guy. It was one of those things that you're like, huh, he's got some confidence. I kind of want to see where this goes, but we got <laughs> a game to get to. Yeah. And I'm sure I've see, saw it out in, you know, I went to an art school, so I'm sure there were capes out there. I don't specifically remember any incidences there. But, I feel um, like I see a cape. At le- I, I take the bus home from work, so I feel <laughs> like I've seen a cape at least once a week. Uh, I think that cloaks should come back. They're, they seem super fucking convenient. As somebody that doesn't like cold, like, 
damp weather, but lives in a place that has six months of cold, damp weather, like just having that thick thing that you can throw over your coat so your clothes don't get cold and then you put the hood up, like it seems convenient if, to me, Yeah. but they went out of style and I can't convince people to bring them back. So, well, you don't convince people to bring them back. You either, you, you either be the one who like convinces everybody. Oh, nobody follows my lead. Yeah. Me, yeah. Like, people will see you and be like, why is the penguin wearing a cloak? <laughs> oh. Start throwing oh. fish at me. And I'm like, <laughs> free um, fish, I guess. Or more likely, yeah, it's it's going to be like that. But there's a chance people will be like, hey, Chloe, that, you know what? That seems like functional and styling. Uh, yeah. But probably not. Probably the fish thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So... But, but, hey, I don't anybody, know. You, you know. You, people look at it and they say, oh, that you look like an idiot. You got a cloak. And it's like, you're wearing a puffy ass Stay Puff Man jacket. That's the fashion now. Like, mm -hmm. how is that not ridiculous? Like, yours isn't any better than mine. It's just that yeah. yours is the current one. Like, I'm wearing, a, I'm, I'm wearing a jean jacket these days, which is like, you know, 40 years too late. Uh, I've got one in my shopping cart on Amazon. It's been there for about a year. So. I fucking love it. I, I yeah. love I genuinely do. Like I said like I said, I've had a epiphany with the skateboarding thing is like I can wear you're whatever I want. Age, and, well like, you're just at that age that you hit I got there at some point in the past where it's like, yeah, I don't fucking care. If I if I think I like it or it'll be comfortable, mm -hmm. I'm wearing I've got crocs. I don't wear them out, but they're my favorite shoes around the house. Just crocs are great. Uh, <laughs> you just hear me hang up. <laughs> just, like a Crocs. So that's a step too far. No. No, they're uh, perfect for like if you have to take the dog out and like I don't want to fucking put shoes on, like but But I have a snapping the, system now that I can <laughs> get my dogs in without uh, <laughs> Snap snap. So you're yeah. Caesar Milan over there. Uh, yeah. Good job, dog whisperer. It's the well, after fucking ten years it's the only thing that gets her to come in for some reason. Because she's fucking psycho, so you just say her name and you yell at her and she she just doesn't process anything. But if you snap for some reason, she's like, "Oh fuck, I gotta go." Uh, so do that. Snap at your dogs. Snap at your friends. Snap at your coworkers. You know, belittle the people around you <laughs> with snapping <laughs> gestures know, to get what you want. I like that you say that. You know, my Tara, my wife, she was a waitress for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there are people that literally fucking do that to people. I I, I did it like. Oh, it's I, different I, when it's I, a coworker I, because it's not just like, yeah, you're familiar well, with them and you were trying to get their attention and they were. They were yeah. But when you treat like just your random service people like that. No. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's one way to like get I actually well. what most of the time I have done it to other coworkers before. And I apologized because I, I I feel like that's a shitty thing to do. But I was telling you a story about the last time uh, yesterday. I don't feel bad about that at all. If I, <laughs> like if you're wasting my fucking time and you're not working or whatever, I'm going to I'm not going to talk to you with the respect you may want. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's a the, good way to piss a lot of people off is to waste their time. Most people do not like having their time wasted. No. Me, my time's worthless <laughs> anyway. I'm not, you know, I'm not. Which begs the question, important. dear listener, what the fuck are you doing here for 53 <laughs> minutes? Yeah, I uh, guess we should end every show with an apology. Yeah. Uh, whoops. Um, we're done wasting your time. We'll do it again next time. So yeah. bye. <laughs>